Hey, how you doing? Rod at the East Coast Lumberjack. And I want to talk today about wedging. Okay, wedges in general. And uh, how to fix an axe head that's loose. The, uh, so um, if you're liking this stuff, I'd ask you to subscribe to my channel. Over the next little bit, we are going to talk a little bit more about uh, how to do certain things. Um, such as hanging an axe head properly. Um, filing and sharpening an axe. Uh, that's a lost art. Um, and also, uh, today is going to be how to fix uh, a loose axe head. So I have, I've, <laughs> I've saved a few examples up for you. Okay, this one here comes from, uh, this is actually my uh, great-grandfather's old axe. And of course, the head on it is loose. Now most of us, when we're in a big rush, what we'll do is something like my great-grandfather did. He drove a washer in here, and that's a screw over here. Okay, so that's so what he put in that one. I've got some other axe heads here. This one here, and it's it's also loose. But if you look at it, it's a Canadian Tire Special. It's got that uh, epoxy in the end of it, okay, sealed, to, to seal the end of it. Which is a nice way to seal uh, an axe handle. But when it gets loose, what do you do? Okay, you're beat. So that one, we have that one as well. I've got this one here. Okay, this guy's pounded in a pile of nails. Um, this one here has got screws, nails, and a bolt. <laughs> okay, so there's, there's lots to pick from here. Now, my least favorite, my least favorite of all of these, when an axe head gets loose, is a guy taking an axe, this is another one that's loose, my great-grandfather's, they take this axe and they stick it in a bucket of water. Okay, so Jeff Zo, this is the one's for you, pal. That's probably my least favorite, and I want to tell you why, okay? Axe heads get loose because what's happening is wood will take on the relative moisture of the environment around it. So a lot of us, you know, if it's not a beautiful axe or something, we will actually leave it outdoors or whatever we do with our axe heads. And what happens is they wind up taking on the, the uh, relative humidity of the uh, ambient air around it. So, if you have, like today outside, we're getting about uh, 50 mils of rain. So there's a lot of moisture in the air, okay, 100% relative humidity. So my handles, and I've got a few malls outside because I'm splitting out some of my hickory, um, they'll, they'll take on that moisture and of course they'll swell. And when I go out to use the axe head next time, that that axe, is, the head's going to be nice and tight on the handle. Um, so what guys do to actually replace that moisture and that make the axe handle swell and take out the slop is they'll put it in a bucket of water. Okay, now there's several reasons why this is a no-no. Okay, the first reason is it does not solve your problem. It's a short-term solution. Okay, it's not a permanent solution because guys that dunk their axe heads in water do it for the life of the axe. Because what happens is once it uh, swells up again, the next time it shrinks, it'll shrink smaller than it was before. Okay, and it may, may be, you know, uh, so small that we can't see it with the naked eye, but you'll know it because every time it, sh it shrinks a little bit, it'll get loose again. And, and usually, as you do that over and over again, it gets more and more loose. Uh, the second reason I don't like it is because over time, what that does is that rusts the inside of the eye. Okay, I've played with these axes after these guys have done it for years, and it does. It pits the inside of the eye, and it starts causing a lot of problems from internally, okay? Water and rust and metal don't go well together, as we all know. Okay, so those are two of the basic reasons I would not put that, because it, it doesn't solve your problem. In all honesty, the best thing to do when your axe head gets loose and you're tempted to go put it in a bucket of water, is take the wedge out and put a new one in. And I say that because what's happened is now your handle wood has gotten quite small, okay, from the, the shrinking and, the, and the, the swelling and the shrinking. So if it's at the small point, if you wedge it with a wooden wedge at that point, it's going to hold really well, likely for the rest of the life of your axe handle. Okay, so the thing to do at that point is to re-wedge it. And, the, and that saves putting all this metal in, because eventually you've got to take that out if you want to replace that handle. And when you start drilling and you hit another metal, like I just did here a while ago, I broke two drill bits. Okay, that's what happens. You hit that stop and it busts them. So it's going to cause you a lot of problems in the long run anyhow. So the best thing to do is take the extra couple of minutes, 
run in and grab a new wedge, pop the old one out, put the new one in, drive it in nice and tight, and you shouldn't have any more problems. Um, so that's, that's about fixing a loose axe head. Okay, again, the best thing to do is to re-wedge. Now, some guys, what they'll do, they'll pound the axe head on a little bit farther. They'll tap the bottom of it. And if you ever want to tighten up an axe head, um, you don't pound it from the other end. You actually just tap the bottom. Okay, and that'll pull that up really nice. And you see this, what it did to this one here, it snugged it up. So usually what happens when you do that is you'll get some curl at the bottom of your axe. Okay, that, that wood will start curling over, and you'll see it there. That is a natural stress point in your handle. Okay, if you ever get that when you're hanging a new axe or putting a rehafting an old axe head and you get that curl at the bottom, advice from the East Coast Lumberjack, pop the handle out, smooth that off so it's a nice uh, smooth transition. There's not an abrupt angle or curve or, or a crease there because what happens, and even if you get it on there and then you try to clean it off with a, with a uh, Zacto knife or something to make it look pretty again, that, that little slit, that little where you've compressed the wood and then cut it off, that causes a little uh, fracture in, in the wood. And then eventually what will happen is that will follow down that axe handle and it wind up splitting. Okay, so that's why, and some guys like big shoulders, and I'm going to talk about that in a few weeks when we talk about hanging axes. They like that big flare, like underneath the axe head, and uh, makes the handle a little bit larger, but it causes a natural weak point in your handle wood, okay? We hang, and, and, and as I showed you in previous videos, we use eight pound, uh, sorry, five pound razor blades is what we use in, uh, in lumberjack sports. Okay, so they're a big axe, they're five pounds, and they are razor sharp. So if anybody wants to keep an axe head on an axe handle, it's us, okay? And usually our heads are pinned, so they won't, they won't slide off. Um, but again, the whole, uh, the whole idea is you do not want, you want a gradual transition from your inside of your eye to your handle, okay? That way there's no stress point to cause a split up, up top here. Okay, if you have a shoulder, and actually when I first started doing this, the guys that taught me how to hang an axe would actually score along the axe handle and then clean it all off and then have it come down and sit on that shoulder. And our axe heads always split there. So again, it doesn't take a rocket science to figure out after a while that, that what you're doing there, actually causing two differences in the wood, gives you a natural stress point where that axe handle can break. Okay, so again, advice from the East Coast Lumberjack, wedge your handles with a new wedge when they're really dry. The second thing is when you're hanging an axe, don't leave an, uh, an edge or a, a lip there at all. Okay, make that a beautiful smooth transition between the eye into the handle. Okay, it'll save you a lot of problems with your axe handles in the long run. So now I want to talk about, as long as this silly uh, camera keeps working today, um, I want to talk about how to take wedges out. So, you can see that we have a challenge with this one. With old, <laughs> Gramp left me a challenge. He's put uh, a screw and a washer in this. So what I'm going to do, actually I'll set you over here. You can see what's going on. Okay, so I'm going to put this in my vise. These little uh, aluminum pieces with uh, rubber on them are really slick because they can hold your handle without, uh, without causing any dents or anything in your handle, especially with new ones. I mean, this old one, I'm going to pull it out anyhow. You notice this old one's nice and thin, right? Vintage handle. And, and, and I'll talk about that eventually as well, is that uh, the difference between the, the modern day fat handles and then these older thinner handles. And which one do you think would last longer? I know a lot of guys think intuitively, oh, it's a big fat handle, it's going to last longer. They don't, because your stress point is up near the narrow part of the eye. And these handles here, the thickest part is up around the eye, okay? And it's thin the rest of the, the handle, so you use the handle where it's supposed to be used. So what I do is, uh, once I have it in the vise, I find my trusty uh, flat, that's just a regular flat screwdriver, and the screw in here is a flat-headed 
slot screw so I should be able to back it out and it is it's backing out you can see here very nicely so that's the first chunk of metal out of here okay so that's the screw um, it looks like there might be another piece of no that's a wood so once you get that out you can actually go in the uh, the groove there the kerf and you can pry out the, the rest of that wood there in the middle now he's got uh, that one's coming out so basically if you can keep putting the the screwdriver in there and prying that stuff out there's I can feel there's something else going on in there so there's likely going to be more metal okay so we've got most of that out now we got to get underneath this we've got to get underneath this washer Okay, so it's starting there. Sometimes you can get a hold of it with a, with a pair of pliers, it'll, it'll come out too. So I've got a little bit of it out here. Let's see if I can actually pry it out yet. Not yet. Nope, not gonna give us, not gonna give yet, but that little piece of wood up top's coming out. So I should be able to get in there and then keep prying this. Okay, so all I'm doing is going in beside it, prying it out. There it is. Okay, so we should be able to pull it out the rest of the way now. Okay, so there's his washer. <laughs> and now it's out. So check the rest of the groove, the kerf. See if there's anything else in there. There's a little bit there. Now I can feel something else in there in the middle. I'm not sure if that'll pop off there now or not. Okay, I might be able to drift that out now. Um, where this is my grandfather's handle, I kind, of, I kind of like to keep it, even though, even though he's beat it up a little bit. Um, you can see how much it's worn right here. So he's, he's missed the, the wood a lot and hit the hit the block. Okay, so there's a there's another wedge down in there. Anyways, I'm gonna see if I can pop that out. So I'm gonna open my vise up. The head fits right in there. I'm gonna take my I use a few things to drift axe handles out with. This is an actual axe drift. Okay, I come from two tie axes and saws in Master New Zealand. I use a railway spike, okay, with the end cut off. That actually works really slick. And then I've got a bolt for, uh, that's a, uh, looks like a half inch bolt. And I use it on some eyes that are a little bit narrow. So it's best if you can get a drift, the drift will fit in, and it goes, because it, it touches on more wood. Okay, so it actually drives the, the handle out a lot easier, a lot smoother. A lot of times, if you put something small in like that bolt, okay, so that's, now, <laughs> if you could see inside there, you can see there's a lot of rust. I think, I think Great Grampy was notorious for putting uh, axe heads in buckets of water. <laughs> what that does allow me to do, of course, now see the handle came out, nice all in one piece. And uh, I can use that now as a pattern. I, I like this because it's a nice, it's a small, it feels good in your hand. It's a, it's a small little handle. Okay, so that's the first one out. Um, now this one here is broken off. Okay, so it broke off here. Look at all the metal in this end. This is the one with the bolt and screws and nails and everything else in. So what I would try to do with this one is turn it upside down and try to punch it out the other way. Okay, rather than messing around with all that metal, Okay, and it started. Now, it may not go the whole way. Oh, actually, it's going to go the whole way. Okay, so that, that's good news. So if it didn't go the whole way, when it does come out, you'll see what happens is it, it loosens up. 
So you can actually get stuff in there and actually pull the rest of that stuff out. But uh, this has started coming. So actually I'll be able to salvage that bolt, whatever that's worth. Um, so I'll just keep punching that out because it's coming quite nicely. So that one's all out clean. That's a Walters. It's actually quite a nice little uh, axe head. I can't wait to put a handle in that. Okay, so yeah, so he's got a screw in there. That one was a screw. This, <laughs> this is just a piece of metal. Um, that's a nail. So this guy used a lot of different things to try to keep this axe. And again, uh, to try to keep his axe. Uh, tight would have been better just to uh, re-wedge it I don't see the bolt anyways the bolt fell down here somewhere so I'll find it later so that's two out okay now the next one okay here's one that has a pile of nails okay along with the wedge so we're going to do the same thing okay we're going to hook on it pull out the metal first once you get the metal out then it's fairly simple to get the wood out Okay, now, sometimes nails, they don't stay overly tight, so usually you can get a hold of the, the head of it with a pair of pliers and give it a pull. Okay, so there, Ardox nail. Okay, so that one come out fairly, now I can't get out the rest of them, so I'm going to use my hammer and just tap underneath them. Okay, usually there's enough of an edge there. There, you can get underneath them a bit, start prying it. There's number two. Number three started. Okay, so they're, they're all started out a little bit, so now I can get my pliers back on them. Okay, there's number two. This one would be a little bit tricky. Starting. Just gotta. Same thing, just get a hold of it, pry a little bit. Sometimes you gotta go one way or the other. Here's number three. They're all the same kind of nail. Okay, and once you get those nails out, it causes it, there's a hole now between each of the little pieces of wooden wedge. So all you got to do is go in there with your flat screwdriver, go in with your flat screwdriver, and pry those pieces of wedge out. Once you get them started out a little bit, hook onto them with your pliers and pull them out. Okay. Now, if you're not concerned about saving the axe handle. If you're not concerned about saving the axe handle, you still need to get the, the metal out. But once, uh, if it's wood, all you need to do is just drill it. Okay? So we got one more nail here. If I can get it out of the way, this axe head should come off. So, we got almost all the wood out, one nail to go, now, still fairly tight, that might, uh, I'd like to have that last one out, if I had a pair of vice grips, but I know my vice grips are out in the garage.
So all I can do is just keep prying that nail. Get a little bit stronger. A little bit stronger screwdriver. There. That might do it. Stubborn, but we got her. Okay, so now all the nails are out. So I'm going to do the same thing again. Okay? I'm going to open this up. You can see there's a little bit of wedge left in there. I don't think that'll come out. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to open that up and tap it out. Okay. So we want our axe drift. Again, you want whatever will cover the most of the wood because it will keep it from busting up. So the problem with this drift is it's the same size as the axe eye, so it's going to be a little tight. So I'm just going to take it out now that I've got it started. Okay, you see how much it started? And now I know I can put that other peg in. Drive the rest of the way out. Okay, so that one's out and clean now. So the last one, and again, it saved it saved that vintage handle for us. If you want to save it, it's actually too small for my liking. It's really, really tiny. I find it takes a lot of strength to try to hang on to that thing. So the last one I want to show you is this one here. This is the one that has the epoxy in it. Okay, and the handle is it's a it's a maple handle. It's fat. There's no, I, uh, personal preference. I don't like these kinds of little, just little flare off handles with nothing there. If you put a mitt or a glove on in the winter time, first time you swing this thing, it's, it's across the pucker brush. Okay, so I'm not looking forward to saving this handle whatsoever. So I'm just going to clamp the handle and all in here. Okay. And then I'm going to get a big, a big drill bit, and I'm going to drill that epoxy, okay? I'm going to drill right along where the wedge should be. And there may be a wedge in there, but I'm going to start at the bottom and work my way up to the top. Okay, and then go up and set just enough that you can get another hole right above that one. Okay. Now, if, if this doesn't work, the other easy way, if you don't care about the handle, my furnace is going here behind me. I'll just take that whole thing and throw it in the furnace. Okay, I might, I might cut it off down here with a bandsaw, throw the head in the furnace. And I actually had that last night. I'll show you what, what happens. Here's, uh, here's my PV. And I, I broke this handle the other day. And uh, it had a big piece of wood in it. I just threw the whole thing in the fire. Because again, I'm not worried about the temper in this. Um, and there it is. Okay. It, it burns it out. So it comes out as charcoal. And it's done. So I can always do that if this doesn't work.